welcome to the first video of 2024. It's quite odd talking in front of the camera. It's something that I want to get used to over time. You know, it's, it's weird talking like this, you know, not to a person, but to a lens that's staring directly at you. But today for the first video, we have two packages from a company called Lysoling. If you don't know what they are, take a look at these seemingly ordinary Lego sets and watch them come to life. tell already, Lighterling is an LED lighting kit for your LEGO sets. You can use them for display purposes or in my case I'm using them for LEGO photography. Today we have Dagobah set which is the LEGO Star Wars set and we've also got the A-Frame cabin which both come in very very nice packaging and you have your LEDs which have all connected to one wire and one USB port which then plugs into the power brick, which take three AA batteries, and it has an on and off switch, which is super helpful. Obviously don't wanna have it on all the time. And you've also got a universal instruction kit, which basically shows you how to set up these lights safely so you don't break the wires because the wires are very thin and they need to be so that you don't see them when you're displaying them. Each lighting kit comes with its own instruction manual on where to place the LEDs as well as the wiring inside the LEGO sets. The difference in most lighting kits is they'll use their own bricks that are replicas of LEGO bricks. But the thing with Lighterling is they take the LEGO pieces, official LEGO pieces, and they put wires through them so that they can create the LEDs. So they stick perfectly to your LEGO sets and they're really awesome. So the first set I set it up in was the Lego Dagobah set. Lighting on this is incredible, honestly, especially in the dark. On the Dagobah set specifically, it actually has a unique brick. It has a flashing brick on the X-Wing fighter, which I think is awesome. One of the positives to this lighting kit is it has this little plastic piece at the end of the wire, and all you have to do is pull that through, and it threads all the wires together at the back so you can neatly tuck them away. The lights aren't too bright that they become distracting. They all fit seamlessly into the set. They don't look out of place. For display purposes, they look fantastic sitting on the shelf. They really made the LEGO set just look a whole lot better by having lighting. It makes it almost look like a realistic set. I had no issues following the instructions. Because this isn't building LEGO anymore, this is becoming an electrician almost for these LEGO sets. They show you which bricks to take out, where to place the wires, where they should feed through. Obviously the bigger the sets are, the more complicated it will be because you've got extra steps to follow through, you've got more pieces to take out. And these can also be great gifts for people who are obsessed with LEGO sets because it's a new and interesting way to display these sets that, you know, most people haven't seen before. Because I'm sure it's going to brighten their day. Uh -huh. It's currently the next day and my question about these sets is whether or not they're good for LEGO photography. So for this shoot I'm going to be using the Canon 50mm f1.8 and we're going to test these shots in the garage and see if they turn out good. So I've taken the LEGO sets inside the garage because the garage is already quite a dark place so that's what's going to help these lights really pop. And I've also placed these big planks of wood against the window so that there's hardly any light coming through and we can just play around with the LEDs and use those to light the environment. So hopefully we get some good shots. very surprised at the photos I was able to take with these lights. It took me a while to get used to having the lights and learning how to take photos with the sets as well as the minifigures and bouncing light off their faces 
and the environment. One of my favorite photos from the shoot is a shot of the front of the cabin. The contrast between almost the daylight in the front and then the cabin being lit on the inside, it just works perfectly. It also gives the shot a nice warm environment because of the orange tones and orange lights. It just works to create an awesome shot. My next favourite image is the Lego minifigure carrying his guitar to the next level of the cabin. I made sure to keep the top part of the light just in the shot so that you could see how this has been illuminated. I'd never shoot this cabin the way that I've done it here without these lights because it would just be too dark and it wouldn't feel like a cabin really without those lights that look so natural. I also had another shot where we were sitting on a chair at the bottom floor. It also created for some nice dramatic lighting so I even took the image and made it black and white which made an awesome shot again. And then I just got a few shots here and there of the characters interacting with the cabin, you know, cooking some eggs, get the typewriter, putting a vinyl on, and other figures playing the guitar. And overall the cabin was really fun to shoot. I'll be honest, I had to get pretty creative when I went inside the cabin because there's not a whole lot of spaces that you can move the figure around to take shots with without an object being in the way or the walls intercepting with the shot. But with these lights, I just created for a nice cozy atmosphere, which is what this cabin is. And they did a terrific job at nailing in the tones of the lights to match the scene of the Lego set which is the A-frame cabin. Next I moved on to the Lego Star Wars Dagobah set and this one was quite tricky I'm not gonna lie. Because the set is quite small and it has a frame around the set itself it's quite difficult to get a wide range of shots without exposing the bottom plate or the background. I had this shot here which I'm pretty happy with. I got a nice view of the lamp, the lights in the trees and also the light in the background. What I really like about this shot is the top lights are actually reflecting off the lightsaber and it just creates for a nice dramatic shot. Also these lights work really great as highlights for these sets. And I also played around with using the lights. I actually pulled some of the lights out from where they originally were and I placed them around the set to create some nice moody lighting. Even the light inside Yoda's home worked really well. I had Luke peeking around the corner and just having the light reflect off his face. So after photographing these sets with the LED lights, I can confidently say that if you want to take your LEGO photography to the next level, then you definitely need to purchase these lights. It gives your shots a new atmosphere and it also gives the photos a unique look that most people wouldn't expect to see in LEGO sets. Like LEGO bricks that light up is something that a lot of people haven't seen before. And that is my review of the LED kit provided by Lighterling. Again, a massive thank you to you guys for sending this out. I've had a lot of fun photographing and reviewing this product. If you want to see if they make any LED kits for your specific set, then I'll leave a link to their website in the description below. And that's it. That's the first video of 2024. I've got a new video coming out in the next week. This one is about Lego photography with coffee, which is sounds weird, but you'll it'll make sense when you see the video. If you want to see the rest of the photos I took on this shoot, they'll be on my Instagram, which I'll leave in the description below. Thank you for watching this video, and I'll see you in the next video. That was cringe.